Good morning, YouTube. It's Jason again with JJ Drones, and we are getting ready to take off to go pick up our last pickup at Rumiano Cheese up in Willows, California. Now, today is going to be a pretty easy day. We only have the one pickup, and then we're gonna start heading back to Wisconsin. And we're also gonna be going over Donner's Pass, which is um, mountain range over here in California and it's probably one of the most frustrating <laughs> areas to drive, especially in the winter time. But today we shouldn't run into any issues. It's gonna be a nice sunny day up there on Donner's Pass. So we're gonna get this picked up, start heading back to Wisconsin, and we're gonna get right into this video. Well, good morning, YouTube. It is now Thursday. And we are getting on our way up to Willows, California to go pick up our last load of cheese before we head back to Wisconsin. Now, this is another location that I've never picked up at before, but when I looked on it on, uh, Google Maps, it didn't look too complicated. So we're gonna get up there, we're gonna go pick up that load and then we're gonna start heading back. Now, one of the problems that we're gonna run into today is the fact that, like I told you on the last video, I try not to get fuel in California. Fuel in California is the most expensive out of anywhere in the country. And yeah, I don't pay for the fuel, okay? Brake push pays for the fuel, but I try to be a good steward of their money. I try not to spend it unwisely, I guess you could say. But today is going to be a day where I think we're going to have to splash on like 30, 40 gallons, something like that. Just something to get us over into Nevada. And then once we get into Nevada, then we can fill up. Got to do what you got to do in order to make this truck go down the road. Because no diesel means no go. Right? Still not very uh, sure how well these things do at night. I mean, I've got the red light over me and I still haven't edited the last video that I did when I was driving at night, which was yesterday. And it wasn't even night, it's just really early morning. But the GoPros don't seem to like to work in the dark as well as I'd like them to. We're not gonna be an hour early this morning. According from what I saw on the Google reviews, they don't even open until six. So it didn't make sense to get there an hour beforehand. But we'll be there probably about 10 to 15 minutes early. No big deal. We'll be there at six. Oh, we're almost there. 2.3 miles left to go. And it's 5.42. Wow, guys. <laughs> I mean, we're here. This is sketchy as I'll get out, but we're here. And I do see a car, so I'm gonna go see if I can go check in. There's a couple cars here. But, all right, I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're in the right place. Now, they want me to go into door four or five. Now, this is an area that is not very well lit. 
So we have to be extremely careful. And they do want the tandem slid all the way to the back. So. And I did let the uh, Amy know that we were here. Now, if you're not familiar with how to slide tandems, we'll go through that. Now, the one thing that I will tell you as an experienced driver is don't slide your tandems until you're already almost into the door. Now we're gonna shoot for door four, but if we have to go into door five, we will. I'm gonna go open the doors real quick. I'll be right back. Now your trucking company may not have this, but our trailers have lights inside the trailer. So I turn those lights on just to give me a little bit more light while I'm backing up. Well, it looks like we're going for door five. Like I said, I was thinking of going for door four, but door five seems to be the most viable option with how we're backing in. Not a big deal when you're given an option. Don't just be set on getting in that one door. Use whatever door they give you that will work. All right, let's go slide these tandems. First thing you need to do is set your trailer brakes. Then come out. Right here, you just pull this valve and your pins go out. Okay. And you should always have a flashlight. Now, push in your tractor brakes, put it into first gear, pull forward until you can't go forward anymore. Now with these ones, all you have to do is push in the trailer brakes Pull down on your trailer brake handle and just make sure that they're locked into place. After that, then you just finish backing in. Now it's easier to back into the, your spot first and then slide the tandems. I've seen drivers try and slide the tandems first and then back into the door and that just makes it more difficult for them to back. So just another tip that I've learned from driving over the years. And Amy texted me back and said, thank you for letting her know that I'm here. And we are done. Backed into a door and we're all set. As soon as we're done, we'll come back.
guys. We are loaded up. And I am ready to get out of here and go get this thing scaled and get fuel. Now you should always scale your loads, no matter how light you think they are, because you just never know whether the weights that are on the bills are accurate. And cat scale has actually made it super easy now to scale. And if you're unfamiliar with cat scale, they're the uh, certified scales that are at every truck stop around the country. Well, I can't say every truck stop, but 99% of the truck stops around the country have cat scales. And there's a uh, Weigh My Truck app in the Google Play Store and on uh, in the Apple Store. And you don't even have to go into the truck stop. All you have to do is get on the scale, put in your scale location, and if you have your credit card information or if your company allows you to use your fuel card for purchasing cat scales, you can do it that way as well. And I find that to be a added benefit of working here is that we can use our fuel card. And uh, so you just go and put in all that information and then it sends it to you right to your phone. Now, if you want, you can actually go inside and get a hard copy, paper copy of your scale ticket. You have an hour afterwards to go pick that up. And it's really easy. All you do is go on the truck stop, say, I got a cat scale ticket that I used the app to get. And they're very knowledgeable that that's done that way now so it's not any sort of surprise for them but we're going to scale it we're going to put in probably about 40 gallons of fuel again i don't like to do it but number one we're going to be flying or er, flying we're going to be driving over donner's pass today and that's going to take a little bit more fuel because we're going up into the mountain and then once we get into Nevada, we can fill up the rest of the way. That's 40 gallons, guys. That is so sad. I love California. But we're gonna go inside, get our fuel receipt, get our scale ticket. And then as soon as we're done with that, we'll head on down the road. Forgot how to fix myself. They say that time is free. Then why is it so precious? Oh, I'll say.
dang, I'm sorry, guys. I tried getting some footage while we were going just outside of Sacramento there. There were plenty of cars that could have made it into blinker fluid, but I didn't have enough battery in the GoPros by the time that we made it through there. Now, we are at a rest area just at the bottom of Donner's Pass. We're right at the 3,127 foot mark. According to the GPS and according to the signs on the road, we passed the 3,000 foot mark. Oh, probably about three to four miles ago. But this is a nice little rest area to stop at if uh, you wanna just get out and walk the dogs or let the kids get out, stretch your legs. However, as the sign says, beware of rattlesnakes. And anytime that you're in California, you should probably be aware that there's snakes everywhere. <laughs> just kidding, guys. All right, so we've got all the batteries changed out on the GoPros on the truck. And then uh, we're gonna get back into the truck and start heading for Reno. So stay with me, guys. Alright guys, we're up here at Donner Summit and I just wanted to show you because I was here, I don't know, probably about four or five weeks ago and this place was just completely covered in snow. This entire parking lot was just buried. None of this was even cleared out. Now we're going to go over here to the snowbank. And I'm 5'10. And this is how much snow. I can't even reach the top of this. So, yeah, this is just amazing. 
come over here to the, the rest area building. And you can see that all the snow is still all over this thing. just amazing what you can't see right now is just behind here are a whole bunch of picnic tables and walking trails and everything like that but obviously we're not able to go back there because it is completely jam-packed with snow I'd say there's still a good eight to ten feet of snow all piled up back there so it's gonna be a while before this snow is actually melted but it is amazing what they were able to do to get this cleared out. So I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, we're going to get back to the truck and finish our trip down to Reno. And then we'll finish out this video. So stay with me. Well, guys, it's the end of another day. And we had a fantastic day because we ended up getting loaded. I got to fly the drone. And I got to show you a little bit of Donner's Pass. Not sure about the drive down the mountain because when I got here to the truck stop, the cameras were not rolling. So sorry if I didn't get all of it, but I did give it a shot. All the batteries were supposed to be charged, so I don't know why they didn't, you know, completely make it to here because they should have. Um, but we're in Reno, Nevada. And we're going to be going to Blanchardville, Wisconsin. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys because pretty much the rest of the drive is all just going to be driving, stopping for fuel, going to sleep, getting up, repeating the process over and over until we get to Wisconsin. So what I'm going to do is when we get to Wisconsin and we're going to go deliver the cheese load, um, I'll film that and then the trip back to the yard. And then after that, that'll be the end of this trip. I'm really enjoying doing these trucking vlog videos because let's face it, this is what I do for a living. Uh, I'm not going to make a fortune on YouTube. I'm not going to be a huge channel. And uh, the best thing that I can do is show you guys what I do so that you guys understand what goes into a trucking job. And if you're interested in getting into the trucking industry, you know, hopefully you can learn something from me. And as I've said before, if there's something that you want me to film that I haven't yet, put that in the comments below because I, I'll be happy to do a video on it. There's so many things that we could do like e-logs, um, uh, basically understanding how to operate them, um, how to do a split sleeper berth, how to do recaps, you know, the list goes on and on so definitely let me know in the comments section below if that is something that you would be interested in getting help with because that's what i'm here for i'm here to help others and that i feel is the best way that i can help you if you got any value from the content in this video and you appreciate the fact that i put so much work into making one of these videos Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified the next time I upload a video to YouTube. Like I said, this is the end of basically all of the deliveries and pickups. And the next time that we see each other, I'll be going and delivering in Blatchardville, Wisconsin. But until then, I appreciate you all for coming along for this ride with me, and we'll see you later on down the road. Bye, guys.